Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from whatever part of the world you're watching from. Welcome to Super Sunday. It's going to be an amazing time in God's presence. Of course, we're carriers of God's presence. We're going to we're fellowshiping and it's going to be an amazing time. His presence is here already and just open up your heart, open up yourself and just not even think about those worries and just let God just do what he knows how to do best. Just sweep his days and give God worship in the house. Just give him praise. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are wonderful, Jesus. You are mighty. You are holy. You are beautiful. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we believe in you. We know who you are. We just come to worship you, Dad. We just bless your holy name. There's nobody like you, O oh God. We open up our hearts to you. We open up ourselves to you, O oh God. Libra de la bow, zika tired of the bow, man de legede, libra de the bow, zika tired of the bow, man de legede, libra da, libra de the bow. Lord, we open up our hearts to you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Jesus. You are worthy, O oh God. You are worthy, Jesus. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. Receive our worship. Receive our praise. Let your name alone be glorified. We exalt you, O God. You are indescribable. You are mighty. Hallelujah. 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 Savior, you are the world within it. 
Savior's love through the storm. He is the Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone. Christ alone. Cornerstone. The weak and made strong in the Savior's love.
unstoppable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God Oh powerful, oh powerful Untamable, I search with all to our knees as we hurry hoping You are amazing God Indescribable, indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them finally Welcome everyone, welcome to Kingdom Embassy International, where kings are raised, the dead are raised, dreams are raised, fortunes are raised, futures are raised, you are raised, we were raised with him, we're alive in him and we're expressing that together. That's what this is all about, right? So good morning, we're glad to have you in-house, we're glad to have you online, we love you all. And we know you love us back. Isn't it wonderful to be in Christ? Without being in Christ, nothing would matter, would it? You could have all the nice food and fancy things on earth, but without being in Christ, you really don't have anything. Everything's fading away. But in Him, we have everything. Life has just begun for us. It's eternal. And we're walking in abundance every single day in step with him, discovering all that he has for us. And it is fantabulous. It is fantastic. It is amazing. And we're here to celebrate that today. Let's put our hands together for the King of Kings. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for us. And for the musicians who are diligently helping us praise our King better. Hallelujah. Well, welcome again to Kingdom Embassy International. And I have a couple announcements for you. If anyone's, is anyone new here in the building? First time here today? If you are new online, I want you to know that what God has started here and what he's continuing is just an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. With Apostle Charles and Defund, Pastor Donna, God has begun something that has, is affecting multitudes of people. If Sonia could come up here and help out for a quick moment. It's affecting multitudes of people through glorious teaching, through truth that you... Yeah, okay, you have to go with her, so precious, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then you just wait here. Okay, so uh, 
You know what that is? It's called affecting generations. <laughs> now look, we have two amazing events coming up. And this is what I want to inform you about in, by way of announcements. Kingdom Leadership Academy is September 24th and 25th. You can now, if Sonia would come up and help out for a moment, you could pat the other one. And, so Kingdom Leadership Academy, you can now register at psom.org. And you will not be disappointed. So what that is, is the specific title for this Kingdom Leadership Academy. Thank you all for your continued attention. Is, uh, all right. You know, hey, distractions come in different packages sometimes. You just got to keep your focus. So. Listen, how many was at the last, how many of you were at the last Kingdom Leadership Academy? Raise your hand if you were there. Do you remember a download that Apostle Charles received at that time about the excellent ones? Do you remember that? And he, when he taught it, he said, you ought to listen to this a hundred times, you know? Amazing. Well, listen, this Kingdom Leadership Academy is entitled The Excellent Ones. So we're going to dig deeper into that. I am so looking forward to it. That's September 24th, 25th. Make the investment in yourself. And you, nor those you are called to serve, will be disappointed. Hallelujah. The School of the Spirit is coming up in October. How many of you have been to the School of the Spirit? No, not yet. Oh my goodness. You're in for some amazing things. These are... These are provisions that God has given. This is October 21st to 24th. You can also register at psom.org. But October 21st to the 24th, we have the School of the Spirit. So God has provided these amazing things because you are what he is investing in in order to reach the world that he loves, the world that Jesus died for. He's not going to come back down and reach the world in person, physically, in his own Jesus' body. He comes in his body, you. Hallelujah. So let's uh, give a big shout out to God for all these amazing things that he's doing for us every single day. And why? Why? Why would he do all these things? Because we're in Christ. Hallelujah. All right, musicians, come on back up. Hallelujah. I want to share something with you before we get started. His reign is my domain. His name removed my shame. His glory changed my story. His blood is my cleansing flood. His pain became my gain. His love has placed me above. His mercy provided me a legacy. His royalty gave me dignity. His grace helps me run my race. His peace brings my release. His fire keeps me inspired. His spirit has made me legitimate. His call reversed my fall. His indwelling quickens my excelling. His provision fuels my vision. His wisdom releases my kingdom. And that is why we look to him. Hallelujah. God, I look to you, I won't 
just what to do
themselves you know sometimes they cannot just they just find it difficult to call the name Jesus and they just say oh the universe but we know in whom we have believed we do not just believe in him we know we know we've gone past the believing part we know that he is Lord see at some point every knee will bow at some point and every tongue must confess because you cannot deny the fact that he is Lord, Lord of all because hallelujah our God will reign Yeah. 
God be for you? What can men do to you? He is the Lord. He is the Lord over your life. Not the bills. Not your job. Jesus is the Lord over your life. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. He cares so much for you. Lord If He cares about the sparrows in the bush, how much more you made in His image and likeness?
promise to you stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I am still in your hand This is my confidence You never fail Faithfulness We are still in your hand We are still in my hand This is my comfort You never, you never, one more time Your promise still stands Your promise go to somebody hold a partner and we're gonna sing this and this is a declaration because we see him move he's moving the mountains whatever is that obstacle that is in your way the mountains are being moved right now so go to a partner and we're gonna do this prophetically are you ready come on all right let's everyone stand up come on just let's stand up on our feet let's go come on i see you move you move the mountains and I believe I see you do it again You made a way Where there was no way And I believe I see you I see you move I see you move You move the mountains You move the Remain in your 
your hand Now this is the confidence You can never fail Your promise still stands Say your promise still stands
about you is great we exalt your mighty name this morning we exalt your mighty name this morning hallelujah we thank you Lord for your word that stands forever we thank you Lord that you are the same yesterday today and forever we thank you you are the Lord and you do not change hallelujah you are the rock on which we stand we give you praise this morning in Jesus name hallelujah let's put our hands together for Jesus hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. you may be seated hallelujah good morning everybody good morning hallelujah make sure we get this sound working properly Can you guys hear me okay yes. loud and clear I don't have to yell 
Do I have to yell? No? Good. Hallelujah. I want you to look at your neighbor and give him a great big smile. Great big smile. I want to see teeth. None of these little smirks. Teeth. Let's see teeth. That's better. That's much, much better. All right. Now, that's my family. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength, right? We have to be joyful if we want to remain strong. Amen. Are you excited to be in the house this morning? Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word? We're going to get right to it. You ready? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. You guys wondering what I'm doing? Giving, giving you guys time to get settled. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've got good word for you this morning. It's always good. The word is always good. Amen. The seed is always good. The problem is the ground. That's the problem. The seed is always good. The problem is the ground. The ground must be receptive to the seed. It must be able to receive the seed so that the seed can grow. So whenever you are in the presence of the word, amen? Whenever you're in the presence of the word, you want to make sure that your ground is prepared. That means your heart. That means the attitude of your heart. You're prepared to learn and to listen and to enjoy. Amen? Having the right attitude towards the word determines how quickly that seed will germinate. Amen? How many of you like results? How many of you like quick results? We want things quickly, right? It deter it's, we determine how quickly we get our results. That's really the bottom line. We, we're the determining factor. It's not the word, it's not the seed, it's not even God. We are the ones that determine how quickly we get results based on how willing we are to move when God says move. How quickly do we respond to the word? How quickly do we respond to the instructions that God has given us? The quicker we respond, the quicker the results. The more we hesitate and delay, the more we delay the results. Amen? That is not what I was going to talk about this morning. This is just a little... Is this a pep talk? Are you feeling pepped? <laughs> this is a little, 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 uh, what do you call it? Addendum. <laughs> Pre-addendum. Anyway, are you ready? Yeah. Hallelujah. The sound is still kind of ringing a little bit. Hallelujah. I want to be able to make sure the sound is all right. <laughs> Amen. Sound is important, very important. Faith comes by hearing. You can't hear without the right sound, right? Hallelujah. All right, this morning I want to talk about de developing discernment. Amen? Developing discernment. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, this sound is just not comfortable. Hallelujah. Developing discernment. Amen. How many of you know that we need to learn how to navigate in this world successfully? How many of you want to navigate this world successfully? You want to be able to see the pitfalls before they come up, right? You want to be able to avoid the traps that the enemy has set for us. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's his job. That is what he's out there to do. He's out there to steal, 
the word from you. He's out there to steal uh, all that God has planted in you. He's out there to destroy your works. He's out there to kill your life. That's what he's, that, that, that is what Satan is all about. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. So we have to be able to learn to navigate through this world to circumvent all the traps that he has planned for us. Amen? First of all, you have to know that Satan is not all-knowing. He is not God. God is all-knowing. Satan is not. The enemy is not. He only knows what we allow him to know. He only knows what we allow him to know. That's why your words are very important. Your mouth is very important. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. By your words, you condemn, or by your words, you bless. Amen? It's by your words. Say, everyone say, by my words. That's how the enemy knows what traps to plan for you. The enemy knows what things he can use to pull you away from your destiny. How? Because of the words that we speak. Amen? That's the only way he can know, because he does not know the heart of man. He does not know. All he knows is what is your past. All he knows is the things that you have put out there for him to know. Amen? So it's important that we learn to discern what is of God and what is from the enemy, what is from Satan. Amen? How many, you wanna, how many of you are ready for this? You ready for this? Okay, because I don't want to give you anything that you don't want. I want to make sure this is what you want. Okay. Because we can, we can talk about kumbaya if you want to. God loves you. He loves me. Let's go skip in the daisies. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, the Bible says that he has put apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, all these people in place for the equipping of the saints. Equipping for what? For the ministry. Not just to do the ministry, but, but to be successful in the ministry. Amen. So we're learning these things so that we can be the most productive that we can possibly be. We can be successful at what God has put within us. Amen? Some of the biggest questions I believe believers have, I'm going to give you a list of a few questions, and maybe you've had some of these questions. Amen? I have. Number one is, is the voice that I'm hearing God? Or is it just me? Right? Is the voice that I'm hearing God or is it something else? Am I hearing, is, it, is that just me? Is it just my feelings? The next one is the feelings, the troubled feelings that I'm having. Is it the conviction of the Holy Spirit or is it condemnation from the enemy? The next one is, is the closed door that we encounter caused by God or is it a hindrance? Is the open door God's plan or is it a distraction? How many of you had ever had some of these questions? Is the help that I'm getting from angels sent by God or from the false angel of light who would lead me into destruction. We, these are things that we have to be able to discern. It takes discernment, amen? You can't guess about these things. You have to know. Everyone say, I have to know. And then the last one is, is this God's will or is it Satan's trap? Right? Because every day we are faced with 
choices. We are faced with situations, faced with circumstances. We're faced with opportunities. Oftentimes, sometimes it's not problems we're faced with. We're faced with opportunities. Some of us get many opportunities presented to us at one time. So how do you know which opportunity you should choose? Everyone say discernment. You need to be able to discern which opportunity is from God and which is a distraction from the devil. Amen? There are two kinds of perception. Number one, we perceive things by our senses, the physical, our five senses. And the second one is by the spirit. Perception by the senses is a distorted reality. Perception by your senses is a distorted reality. But perception by the Spirit is the true reality which can only be accessed by discernment. Being able to access what is true, the truth, comes by discernment. Because what you perceive with your five senses, I said, is a distorted reality. Why? Because those things change. Those things change. For example, if you have a symptom in your body, your senses are telling you because of this symptom that you might have this, this, or this, right? You go to the doctor, they run tests, and they say that. They say, well, according to this, this is what we think you might have based on the symptom, based on the senses right but the truth is that jesus took every sickness the truth is the real reality is that no sickness can come on your body regardless of what your senses are telling you the senses are giving you a distorted reality it's giving you an alternate reality which is not the real reality that we live in which is the reality of what Jesus has done, the reality of the Word made flesh. Amen? Amen? So we have, but being able to see and enter and walk in that reality is accessed by discernment. Being able to discern what is true and what is fact. Facts change, truth never changes. Amen? The fact is you may feel a pain, but the truth is that's already taken care of. It's illegal. The truth is it's trespassing. Amen? So what do you do about it? You get rid of it. If somebody's trespassing on your property, what do you do? You get rid of them. They don't belong on your property. You say, get off my property or I'll call the cops. Right? So if the enemy comes bringing a symptom on your body, you say, get out or I'm calling the cops. Jesus. Amen? So these are the things we have to uh, uh, learn. How to develop discernment. Most people confuse these two things. They confuse the senses, the sen perception by the senses and perception by the spirit. We get them confused all the time. Am I right? More often than not, what we see is not what really is. Because your senses can be manipulated. What you see, what you hear, what you feel, what you take, everything, those things can be manipulated. Amen? So you cannot go by your senses. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 15. Says, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, of, the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, this is Elisha, his servant said unto him, alas, my master, what are we going to do? We're surrounded. Most of you know this story. And he answered, fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. 
And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. The host around you is far greater than the host that the enemy would bring against you. The servant was perceiving by his senses. What he saw with his physical eyes was the enemy swarming them. It's just the two of them. And they have an entire army surrounding them. The first response is, we're dead, right? That's the first response, by the senses. But then, when the servant's eyes were opened, his spiritual perception, his discernment was opened, he could see, with his spiritual eyes, he could see the army of God that was around him. You have an army around you that the enemy cannot penetrate. This army doesn't come and go. It's, he's consistently there. But what the things that we do and say, we either empower that army or we disable that army by the things that we say, because that army can only move by our own permission. Amen? So what we see and what we hear may not be what is actually true. Amen? We cannot trust our five senses. Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. This is going to help you. This Matthew 13, verse 10. It says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why do you speak unto them in parables? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Verse 12. For whosoever has, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. To whos for whosoever has, has what? What do you have? What do you have? Revelation. Everyone say revelation. The more revelation you have, the more will be given to you. The more revelation that you have of the word alive in you, the more you're going to produce. The more you are going to uh, uh, get results. Amen? So the more you have, the more will be given to you and in abundance. Everyone say abundance. But whosoever has not, from him shall be taken away even that he has. For those who lack revelation, they lose even the things that they've been given. The things that they be, they've been given, they cannot hold on to and they, they cannot... Uh, um, grow into, they can't learn to uh, use in order to be productive, they lose it. Amen? They lose the blessing that they have. My people perish for lack of knowledge because you don't know. Everyone say knowledge. You need to know the truth. Amen? Therefore, Speak I to them in parables, because they seeing not and hearing, because they, they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. So they're seeing, but they're not seeing. They're hearing, but they're not hearing. And, they're, they, can't, and they can't understand, amen? Because they are seeing, they're perceiving with their senses instead of with their spirit. Amen? You have to be able to perceive by the spirit. Seeing, they see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them, verse 14, And in them is fulfilled the prophecy by Isaiah, which said, By hearing you shall hear, 
and shall not understand. By hearing you shall hear and not understand. Why? Because you're hearing what you're, you're, you're not hearing by the Spirit. Amen? You're not listening by the Spirit. You're hearing what you want to hear instead of what's actually being said. Amen? Amen. You're hearing through filters instead of hearing what the Spirit of God is saying right now. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking right now. We have to open your ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen? Get rid of all the filters. Get rid of all the religious nonsense that, that you've acquired over the years. Things that are unscriptural. Get rid of the emotional baggage. See, these are different filters that we listen through. We listen through our own emotional baggage. We listen through our own pain. We listen through our past experiences. We listen through what other people have done to us. We've listened, we listen through what other people have taught us. But no, hear what the Spirit is saying. Forget about all that stuff. You've got to hear fresh. Listen fresh. That's one of the keys to discernment, is you've got to open up your ears. You've got to hear what is being said. Not just the words, but the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. By hearing you shall hear, but shall not understand. And seeing you shall see, and, not, and shall not perceive. Verse 15. This is the key. For this people's heart is waxed gross or in other words it's gotten hard their heart has gotten hard or thick and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed always be teachable always remain teachable you never know when that nugget is going to drop you never know when that that one word that one little key is going to drop that's going to be the key to your breakthrough. It's going to be the key to the miracle that you have been looking for. So always we have to be watchful. We have to listen with a heart to learn at all times, regardless of who's speaking. Amen. Regardless of the message. Amen. I listen I am guilty of this sometimes you listen to a message you're like oh yeah I've heard that a hundred times I yes I know I've heard that yes uh -huh, yeah and then it, like me, things that like lull you to sleep right yeah. been there yes. <laughs> they lull you to sleep you're like I'm beyond that beware <laughs> beware we're, we're all guilty at one point or another, in one degree or another. You know, we think, oh, I'm, I'm beyond this. You never know. Sometimes there are things in the simplest messages are the most profound truths. In the simplest message are the most profound truths. And that's why, <laughs> see, God does things so wonderfully. He hides his immense treasure in simple things in simplicity. He said, don't let people deceive you or pull you away from the simplicity of the gospel of the good news. Good news is good news. Get excited about good news. Amen. I want to learn anything that is going to help me. For their hearts have gotten hard, their ears are dull, their eyes are closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted, and here's the kicker, and I should heal them. They cannot receive. They cannot receive. It's not that Jesus doesn't want to, right? Of course he wants to. I like the Living Bible says, of course I want to. When they, the, the, they asked, you know, the, um, if it wants to be healed, he said, of course I want to heal you. But the hardness of our hearts, the dullness of our hearing, the filters over our eyes have stopped us from receiving all of God's best. Verse 16, but, everyone say but. 
See, this is when the good stuff rolls in. But blessed are your eyes. Say, my eyes are blessed. For they see. And your ears. Say, my ears are blessed. For they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Never take anything for granted. Amen? You guys are hearing things and seeing things that the majority of the Christian world has never heard or seen. I'm telling you that that is a fact, and I think most of you, if not all of you, can attest to that. Amen? This is an uncommon family, and we are doing uncommon things. Amen? Derek was just ministering yesterday. How many, how many miracles were happening? A lot, right? You cannot count. Miracles after miracles after miracles. Why? Because that is the DNA in this house. It's the DNA of Jesus. Amen? Amen? And we all can do it. And we all do do it. Amen? And if you're not doing it, you should be doing it. Get out of yourself. Amen? That's the key. Don't look at yourself. It not, has nothing to do with your abilities, has nothing to do with your talents, has nothing to do with your skills. It has to do with your faith in the one that lives in you. That's all it is. Yes. Amen? Let me give you a list of things that dull our spiritual senses and harden our hearts. Number one, offenses. Offenses. Being offended. Not just offended at the word, but being offended at your brother or sister. Being offended at your past. Being offended, just any offense will dull your senses, will harden your heart. So you need to check yourself, get rid of all offenses. Amen? If you have an offense towards anyone, the Bible says, go and fix it. Don't harbor it. Go and fix it. I'm going to say that again because nobody does it. Hey, this is mom talking now. Nobody does it. They get hurt, people get hurt, and they harbor that hurt. Then they talk about that hurt with their best friends, and they start spreading poison around, and then before you know it, the story starts morphing. Have you ever played Whisper Down the Alley? Whisper Down the Alley? You get a line of people? We should demonstrate. <clears throat> you get a line of people. The more people in the line, the more fun it is. Because what you, you whisper something in the ear of the person next to you, they whisper, they are supposed to repeat what you said to the next person, repeat to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. By the time you get to the last person, the last person will say what they heard and 99.9999999999% chance, 99% of the time, they will say, something completely different from what the first person said. That's the problem with gossip. That's the problem with gossip because the more a story gets repeated, the more distorted it becomes. Because now you've added your own little embellishments, probably not on purpose. Am I telling the truth here? So it's important that you take care of the offense immediately. If you have an offense, if something has offended you, go and clear it up because it will dull your spiritual senses. It will harden your heart. Another one is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Actually, all of these things are linked. One leads to another, to another, to another, to another. Unforgiveness. If somebody hurts you, forgive. The longer you wait to forgive, the worse it is for you, not for the person that hurt you. Amen? 
We've talked about this many, many, many times. The next one is apathy. Apathy. Laziness. Not caring. Amen? Spiritual slumber. That's what it is. Apathy. Beware of that. Getting too comfortable. You get too comfortable, your senses begin to dull. Amen? See, you have to, for your senses to be sharp, you have to be on high alert. All the time. Because when you're on high alert, that's when you notice things. Amen? When you're wide awake, that's when you notice things. When you're, when you're half asleep, you don't notice things. Amen? So, apathy. Next one is fear. Fear will dull your senses because fear is a spirit. Amen? He hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Why? Because fear shuts you off from the spirit. It's another spirit that interferes. Amen? Why do you think throughout the Bible, one of the first things that Jesus and the angels would say to anybody when they came was what? There's a reason. Fear not. Why? Because fear stops the flow of the Spirit. Amen? Fear stops the flow of the Spirit. It stops the flow of the Holy Spirit. That's why even when we're doing the Crusades, we always tell people, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because the moment fear feeds the, the issue. Amen? Fear feeds your problems. Love feeds the solution. So eliminate any fear. The next one is pride. Pride. Thinking you're too big for this. Too much for that. I'm all that. You're all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> pride. No, pride is thinking of yourself, the Bible says, more highly than you ought to think. So what is that? That means you think outside of the way God thinks. That's pride. That's what pride is. Pride is thinking outside of the way God thinks. For example, false humility is pride. False humility is actually pride. Because you're saying, oh, well, you know, woe is me. When God said, you are the head and not the tail. You are more than a conqueror. He has said, he has placed you far above in heavenly places. You are seated in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. He's, he has seated you beside himself. Amen. He has made you equal to him. And for you to sit there and say, oh, well, you know, I'm just little old me. You have just elevated yourself above the word of God. You have elevated yourself above God himself. When you say stupid things like that, that's just stupidity. Ignorance that leads to stupidity. Pride. Always, always just think like God thinks. Amen? That solves the pride issue. Amen. Think like God thinks. Think in line with the Spirit of God. Amen? It's having the Spirit of God. Yes, He has put you above all things. Yes, you have absolute dominion, but you don't have dominion over anybody else. Amen? You can't exert your authority over anybody else against their will. That's witchcraft. The next one is doubt. Doubt. Unbelief. Not believing what the Word of God says. Amen? And the last one I'm going to give you is faulty doctrine. Bad teaching. Unscriptural teaching will dull your senses and harden your heart. Religious nonsense, in other words. Religious nonsense that has no basis in the Word of God. They take one verse of Scripture and twist it and manipulate it. That's exactly what Satan does. He takes one verse and then gives it a little twist. Sounds good, but it's not the truth. It will harden your heart. Amen? 
So it's important that we are able to make sure that our spirits are in tune with the Holy Spirit. Keep your heart soft and pliable. How? By love. Everyone say love. love. Look at your neighbor with mushy eyes and say love. Can you do the mushy eyes? Love. Love. <laughs> Love. That's who we are. Amen. When you give in to who you are, you open yourself up for all of God's best. Amen? And then discernment is easy. See, I'm going to give you today, <clears throat> I'm going to give you keys. I'm going to give you points. I'm going to give you these things that you can write down. But the bottom line is, if you walk in love, all this stuff is just automatic. That's the bottom line. I mean, I can make it really basic and simple, and I can close the book, and we can go home now. But do you guys want the points? A couple of you do. All right. We have to be able to discern right from wrong, good from evil, light from darkness, spirit from flesh, truth from deception. Amen? Matthew 24, 24. <clears throat> For there shall arise false Christs, Say, everyone say false Christs. Not everything that sparkles is gold, right? Not everything that sparkles is a diamond. There's fake ones. You've got the real thing, and then you've got the counterfeits. There's a counterfeit for everything. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. So you can't even depend on that. This is where a lot of Christians get into trouble. Because somebody can do some wonderful miracle does not mean they've been sent by God. You need discernment. Say, I need discernment. In so much that if it were possible, Say, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. When you ha have discernment, when you've developed discernment, you become part of the very elect, which means now it is impossible to deceive you. It's not possible for you to be deceived. Why? Because now you've discovered you are in Christ. That's being the elect. Now you are immersed in him. He is enveloped in you. And there's no way the enemy can deceive you. Why do you think he comes to try and steal the word? Why do you think that he comes with all these stupid little devices trying to bring distractions to keep you from hearing the word, hearing, amen? and understanding and perceiving, ingesting and becoming one with that word. It's not just hearing it with your ears and agreeing, wow, that was a nice word. And then 10 minutes later, somebody comes and asks you, so what was the message? And then you go, uh, let me look back at my notes. Amen. If it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. In other words, that's how cunning they are. If it were possible, they could deceive the very elect because they come so cleverly. That's why you need discernment. Discernment is developed as your spirit matures. Amen? It comes with maturity. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. Is this helping anybody? All right, we're getting to the good stuff. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12 says, for when 
for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. In other words, when you should be at the place where you should be teaching others, you're still suckling milk. You're still desiring baby stuff. You're desiring baby food. You've got to move on from the baby food. We have to grow up. Amen. We have to grow up. Put the milk down. It's time for steak. <laughs> Hallelujah. And goat meat. We're carnivores in this family. <laughs> hey, that's the word. The word said meat, didn't say vegetables. <laughs> I didn't say broccoli. It said, and didn't say just meat. It said strong meat. Why? Because what is meat? Meat is muscle. Meat is muscle. Amen. It gives you strength. Anybody who does any kind of working out knows what do you need in order to build muscle? Protein. Where does the protein come from? Meat. Strong meat. <laughs> Verse 13. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use, everyone say use, use. by use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. It takes exercise, amen? Everyone say exercise. Bodily exercise profits a little. But spiritual exercise is what is going to help you navigate through this world successfully. Spiritual exercise. Having your senses exercised in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. So that you can discern good from evil. You can discern what's coming from God and what's coming from Satan. You can discern what is an opportunity and what is a trap. So we can train our senses to see how God sees, amen? amen? And to hear what God hears, to hear what he is saying, amen? amen? How does God see? To the pure, all things are pure. There's no guile, there's no deceit, no maliciousness, amen? amen. All of his thoughts are thoughts of good and not of evil. Our problem, is that we are too busy and too loud to listen to the Holy Ghost. We're too busy doing our own thing. We're too busy trying to make a living instead of building a life. Amen? We're too busy trying to make ends meet instead of allowing the word in you to meet all of your needs according to his riches. Amen? We're too busy trying to do things our own way instead of doing things God's way. God wants you to be a success. God wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to be the head of your field, whatever it is. He wants you to be above and not beneath. Amen? That is God's will. We have to align ourselves with God's will and we have to do it His way. Amen? but it takes discernment, being able to discern. Ephesians chapter four. I read this on Wednesday. Do we want to read it again? Yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> Ephesians chapter four, verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. What does that mean? So they grow up. 
That's what it means. Perfecting of the saints, the maturing of the saints so that your spirit can grow and mature so that you will not be one of those who will be caught in a lie. You will not be one of those who will be caught in one of the enemy's traps. You will be undeceivable. <laughs> I made up that word. You will, you, you, it will be impossible for you to be deceived. Amen? That's why we're here. That's why Apostle is here. That's why I'm here. That's why the leaders are here. Amen? To edify one another. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Again, maturity. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ so that you can grow up into him. Amen? into the fullness of Christ. That's the fullness of Christ revealed, the manifestation of Jesus revealed in you. Amen? Nothing lacking. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. There are false prophets out there. We have to be able to discern who's from God and who is not. Amen? Spiritual maturity is our responsibility. It's your responsibility. Your maturity is up to you. Not up to God, not up to me, not up to anybody else. All we can do is give you the tools. It's up to you to use those tools. Discernment becomes a shield of protection against the traps of the enemy. When you're able to discern, you can circumvent those traps. You can circumvent them, you can obliterate them, you can bulldoze them, you can do whatever you want with them. Amen? It's your choice. You can roll over them, blow them up, go around them, dig under them, whatever you want to do but it doesn't have to come near you. Amen? Amen? A thousand shall fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. You may see it happening around you, but it won't touch you. Amen. Why? Because you're walking in the spirit. You're walking in discernment. Amen? But you can only discern spiritual things by the spirit, not by the flesh, not by your senses. You cannot be dependent on your senses. Do not be dependent on what your physical eyes see, what your body feels, what your physical ears are hearing. You've got to hear by the Spirit. Amen? You've got to see by the Spirit. That's the key to miracles, is not seeing what's in front of you. You're seeing what's beyond that. You're seeing the real reality. You're seeing into the realm of the Spirit. Amen? That's what happens when you're ministering to people, when, you, when you're healing people, you don't see the, the wheelchair, you don't see them in the wheelchair, you see them up and walking the way God created them, amen? So that when you speak, you're creating, you're taking that real reality and changing the physical reality to the truth, amen? The truth of what you see. That's how it works. And it's easy, amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. I'm almost done. You guys awake? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. I hope this is helping you. I hope this is helping you guys online. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Amen? Amen? Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Amen? You can't mix the two. There's no mix. You, can't, you cannot mix the wisdom of the world with the wisdom of God. It doesn't work. Amen? It's like pouring poison into your drink. You have a glass of water and you're, you're pouring poison into it. 
when you mix the wisdom of the world with the wisdom of God. Why? Because the wisdom of the world is carnal. It's, it, it stems from this physical realm, but the wisdom of the world, is, uh, of God, is spiritual. It comes from the spiritual world, from the spirit of God, and they do not mix. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. That's why you cannot go by your five senses. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have, say, I have, I have. the mind of Christ. Mind of Christ. So it says, who has known the mind of the Lord? And then the word but, good old but. We have, say, I have, I have. the mind of Christ. So you know. You already know. You already have everything available to you. We just have to access it and walk in it. Amen. I'm going to give you five quick keys about discernment. This will help you. Five keys about discernment. Understanding discernment. Number one, condemnation from Satan points to sin. Conviction from the Holy Spirit points to Jesus who saves from sin. In other words, if you are feeling the difference between condemnation and conviction, condemnation from the enemy and conviction by the Holy Ghost, the enemy will bring condemnation which will point you to the mistakes. It'll point you to your past. It'll point you to the pain. But the conviction of the Holy Spirit will point you to Jesus, will point you to the solution. It will point you to salvation. Amen. It'll point you to healing. Amen? Condemnation will destroy you. Conviction will heal you. Amen? Psalm 32, verses 1 through 5. I'm not going to read that. You can just write that down. Basically, David here is talking about, he's, he's talking about when he kept his sin within him and felt condemned, it made him feel dry. But when he released it, when he followed the conviction, then he was set free. Amen? But I'm not going to read that for time's sake because I still have quite a bit here. Do you want me to finish? Number two, the enemy will always point at self and your physical and emotional need. The enemy will always point to your position and self-preservation. But the Spirit of God will point to self-denial and selfless service. Amen? So anything that directs you to selfishness is coming from the enemy. Anything that directs you to selfless service is from God. Amen? Satan is all about trying to soothe the flesh because that is where he operates. He cannot operate in your spirit because you and, and the Spirit of God have become one. You are now a Holy Spirit. So once you, have, you are born again, reborn, that brand new creature, the enemy can't touch that creature. He can't come near that creature. So he can only work in your flesh and in your thinking, in your soul, in your emotions. Those are the only areas that he can manipulate. He cannot manipulate your spirit. That's why you need to feed your spirit the right things. Feed your spirit the right diet so that your spirit can, the, the Bible says the, the sword of the spirit, the word of God is the sword 
of the spirit so that your spirit can wield the sword, the word, in order to divide evil from good. That's what discernment is. Being able to divide evil from good. Amen? Did you get that? Yes. Okay, some of you are just kind of like glassy-eyed. I'm looking at you. I'm paying attention. I'm making mental notes. This one and this one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, and the Spirit of God will always point to selfless service. Amen. Serving others, helping others, looking outward, looking forward. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. It says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Say, I must deny myself. It's a good thing. And take up his cross and follow me. What is take up his cross? That means you're taking up his purpose. Amen? You're taking up what he has planned for you and follow him. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. In other words, when you're trying so hard to preserve your life, it's going to slip right through your fingers. When you're trying so hard just to save yourself, you're going to lose it. Why? Because your focus is off. Your focus isn't on just you, what you can get. Your focus should be on Jesus and what he can do through you. Amen? So whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake. Everyone say for his sake. You lose your life for his sake, not for stupidity's sake, not for ignorance's sake, not for your family's sake, not for anybody else's sake. But if you lose your life, quote unquote, lose, because you lose nothing in the kingdom. For my sake, you shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Satan always plays on your selfish desires. What you want, what you deserve, what is your right? It's my right. Well, your right is actually wrong. Amen? <laughs> God's focus is on what we can do for others. Self-pity makes us pitiful. Self-pity makes us pitiful. But self-denial makes us stronger. When you deny yourself, you deny those selfish desires. You lay them down as a sacrifice and take up his mantle, you take up his purpose, you take up his mission, his commission, and you set your face forward, then you will be worthy of the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Self-preservation makes us oversensitive to imagined slights. I like that. Self-preservation makes us oversensitive to imagined slights. In other words, you're touchy. Self-preservation makes you touchy, oversensitive. Somebody says something innocently and you take it personally for no reason. Why? Because you're, you're on the defense. You've got your defenses up. You don't want anybody to hurt you because you're all about preserving yourself instead of seeing things the way they actually are. Amen? Remember, be careful how you hear. Complete surrender 
to the Spirit of God makes us peaceful and steady and sweet under all circumstances. Amen? It's sweet. Number three. Do you guys want me to finish this? I'm almost done, I think. Number three. Satan emphasizes our past with all the mistakes, the pain, and the heartache. God emphasizes our future and his ever-present help. Amen? God is all about forward. Satan is all about backward. That's why I don't like psychology. I don't like it. Why? Because they always want you to go in the past. What happened to you in the past? Reliving the past, opening up old wounds. No, Jesus comes to heal those things. Amen? If you're, if you're constantly living in the past, you can never go forward. That's why you cannot mix the world's wisdom with God's because they go in opposite directions. They do not come together. Amen? So Satan emphasizes our past. He emphasizes your mistakes. He emphasizes your pain. That's where he lives. That's why the Bible says, forgetting all those things. Forget the past. Lay those things aside and look ahead. Move forward. Walk forward. Amen? Move on to the great future that he has planned for you. His, your steps have already been ordered. Isn't that good news? I was talking about this with um, Pastor Marjorie and Anna yesterday. We had a little Zoom meeting. And I was made, made the analogy of that scripture where it says that, this, that your steps have been ordered. He's ordered our steps. I said, think of it as walking in the deep snow. If you're walking in deep snow, it's a whole lot easier to walk in somebody else's steps than it is to go and make your own steps. He's already made the path. His, the steps are already ordered. All we have to do is just step into them. That's all we have to do. If we step into them, it makes the journey much easier. Amen? Say, my steps are ordered. Psalms chapter 46, verse 1, says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Very present. He's always present. He is your help, no matter what. No matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstances, He's always there. I will never leave you. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. So even when all hell is breaking loose, we are not moved. We're not afraid. Verse 3, Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, we will not fear. Amen? Why? Because our steps are ordered. Your future is already secure. You just have to discover it and then step into it. Amen? Number four. Satan teases us with immediate gain at any cost. He'll tease you with immediate gain at any cost. But God reminds us that through faith and patience, we will receive the promise. Amen? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 21 says, An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. Trying to get a quick fix is not the way to do it. Amen? Yeah. Trying to take shortcuts. What I mean by shortcuts is stepping outside of the Word of God trying to get what doesn't belong to you, we will not be blessed. Amen? That's what it's talking about. You're trying to get an inheritance. You already have the inheritance. 
you have to grow up into it. Anybody with an inheritance, you have to grow up into it. Amen? Even, you know, um, Charles works with MetLife and he works with structured settlements. With structured settlements, usually something happens where there's a uh, settlement has been made, there's an amount of money and it has to be paid out. But the person cannot receive it until they grow up into it. Once they come of age, then the payments start coming out for them. They have to grow up into it. And it's the same thing. We have to grow up in the spirit in order to start enjoying the inheritance we already have. So you don't have to try and grab for things that you're not ready for yet. Because it will destroy you. Amen? If you put a two-year-old behind the wheel of a car, it is going to be very detrimental for them if they start driving. They have to grow up into it. They're not ready for that yet. Amen? So that's why it's important we must grow up in the spirit. But Satan will try to tease us, dangle the carrot in front of us. Look what you can have. He tried that with Jesus, right? He said, look, all the kingdoms of this world I will give you. But Jesus already knew who he was, so it didn't work, amen? When you know who you are, those temptations don't work. You know who you are, you know where you're going, you know, you know who's got your back, those things don't work, amen? Why? Because you can discern. You could discern the carrot that's being dangled in front of you. And you say, no, that's not my inheritance. I know my inheritance. Amen? You need to know your inheritance, what belongs to you. <clears throat> and then grow up into it. Amen? Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Remain diligent unto the end. Amen? We cannot slack off. Remember, apathy is one of the things that dulls your spiritual sentences, uh, senses. Slacking off. You cannot slack off. Show the same diligence you show in the beginning, you should be showing the, at least that same diligence at the end, if not more so. We should be doing more than what we're doing in the beginning. Amen? We should be always increasing. Verse 12, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience. Everyone say faith, faith. and patience. It takes faith and patience to inherit the promises of God. And patience... You guys know dad did a whole teaching on that. If you missed it, make sure you get it because there's a whole big thing about patience you need to learn. Verse 13, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, surely blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Amen? And number five, Satan would have us walk by sight and by earthly wisdom when God, who sees the end from the beginning, would have us walk by faith. Amen? So in other words, the enemy wants you to be moved by your senses to follow after the wisdom of this world. But God says to follow him and walk by faith, amen? And God is the one who sees the end from the beginning, right? Remember, he's already factored all of your mistakes into the final equation. They're already factored in. He already knows what you're gonna do before you do it. And he still believes in you, imagine that. All your mistakes are already factored into the final equation. So why not trust him instead of going outside of him, outside of the word to try and find answers? Amen? Psalm 
1 verse 1. I'm almost done, I promise. I'm doing the preacher thing. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. An hour later, I'm almost done. Two hours later, I'm almost done. Last point. Five hours later. Point, sub point. <laughs> it's my last point, but it got sub point A, B, C, D, E, F, G. No, I'm just kidding. I am almost done. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1. Is this helping anybody? I hope this is helping you because it helped me. If it's good for you, it's good for me. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Pretty self-explanatory. Ungodly counsel. Counsel that's not godly. That means worldly counsel. Nor stands in the way of sinners. That means doing things the way the world does things. Or sits in the seat of the scornful. It means you, you've joined the, the club of the critics. Always criticizing, being critical, being scornful. Always looking at things with a critical eye. No, you need to look at things with a spiritual eye. Amen. Don't be critical of things. Remember, I said this before. Don't criticize the things you don't understand. If you don't understand it, get understanding first, and then you have a platform on which to speak. If you don't understand it, close your mouth. Because you could be condemning yourself. Amen. You do not want to be on the wrong side of the Holy Spirit. You do not want to be on the wrong side of God. Just ask Ananias and Sapphira. All they did was tell a little lie. A little lie. And it was a little lie. They just, they just lied about how much money they gave. That's all they did. And God struck them dead because they lied to the Holy Spirit. Don't play with them. Amen? Amen. You don't play with God. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Be delighted in the word. Get your delight from him. The Bible says if you delight yourself in him, then he'll give you the desires of your heart. You want, your, you want the desires of your heart, you need to be delighted with God first. There's a condition to that. People always just quote that second part. God will give me the desires of my heart, but what's the condition? You have to be delighted in him first. He has to be your delight, not your husband, not your wife, or the thought of a husband or a wife or a family. Amen? That should not be your delight. Your delight must be God. Always. First and foremost. And then he will give you the desires of your heart. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom. Do I say that every time I teach? Yes. 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 Remind, 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 remember. Seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added. Added. You don't have to try. For, you don't have to struggle for it. You don't have to sweat for it. You don't have to scrape and scheme for it. It's just added. Amen? Oh, it can be so much easier if we would just follow the word. Just follow the word of God. Amen? But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And you shall be like a tree. This is one of my favorite psalms. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in your season. Your leaf will not wither, and whatever you do will prosper. Amen. Amen? Amen? The ungodly are not so. So why are we taking advice from them? Why are we seeking advice from them when the Bible says they are like chaff which the wind drives away? Don't mix it. Stay in the word. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, stay in the word. Stay in the word. 
Of course, Hebrews 11:6, without faith it is impossible to please him. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Second Corinthians 5:7, we walk by faith, not by sight. Self-explanatory. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by the spirit, not by our senses. Five ways to develop discernment. I'm done after this. Five ways to develop discernment. Ready? I'm going to go through it quickly. Number one, by knowing and becoming the Word of God. Yes. Knowing and becoming the Word of God. Number two, by fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Number three, by the faith of God. Amen? By the faith of God. Number four, by submitting yourself to God's will. Not your will, but God's will. Submitting yourself. That means that you put yourself under. Amen? You follow his lead. And number five, by resisting any appeal to selfish desires. By resisting temptation, basically. Any appeal anything that would draw you towards selfish desires. Amen? Did I go too fast? I said I was going to go through it quickly. That was too quick? Number one, by knowing and becoming one with the Word of God. Number two, by fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Number three, by the faith of God. We live by faith. What faith is that? The faith that God has put in us. The same faith that God used to create the world. Amen? By that faith, we do everything by that faith. Amen? And then number four, by submitting yourself to God's will. In other words, submitting yourself to the word. Submitting yourself, laying down your selfish laying down it's that self de self denial amen laying yourself down and then picking up Christ burying the old you and walking in the new creature amen and number five by resisting any appeal to the self selfish desires any appeal or any draw. In other words, anything that would draw you away from the kingdom. Those are the things you resist. Amen? Amen. So those are five ways to develop, help develop discernment. And I'm going to leave you with this scripture and I'm done. Psalm 37 verse 5. Commit your way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Mic drop. <laughs> Commit your way unto the Lord. Commit everything to him. Trust in him. Trust in what he's doing in you. Amen. Trust the word to do its job in you. See, oftentimes we'll start out in the spirit and then we end up in the flesh. Why? Because we've gotten distracted. We've allowed the distractions to come in. We've moved out of the spirit and into the flesh. Therefore, now we're being ruled by our senses instead of by discernment. Amen. So you want to walk in the spirit. Trust in him and he shall bring it to pass though the vision may tarry it will surely come to pass don't give up don't quit it's guaranteed amen god's dreams in you are guaranteed you only fail when you give up making mistakes doesn't make you a failure everybody makes mistakes it's what you do after the mistakes that determines whether you rise or fall. Amen? Make those mistakes and turn them into miracles. Amen? Every mistake can be turned around to a miracle because he turns everything that the enemy meant for evil and he turns it around for our good. If our hearts 
are grounded in him. Amen? Amen. If we are following his principles, he'll turn everything around for your good. So don't worry about mistakes. Make the mistakes if you have to. I'd rather you didn't. If you can avoid it. But learn, don't repeat. Amen? Don't repeat your mistakes. Remember what I said in the beginning. Always be teachable. Be open to learn. Learn from your mistakes. Don't repeat your mistakes. Learn to discern those around you. Learn to discern the spirits that you come in contact with. Amen? See with the eyes of the spirit, not with your physical senses. And like I said, all of this in a nutshell, walk in love. That takes care of it all. Amen? Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? I hope this has helped you. Please listen to this message again. Please listen to this message again. Read the scriptures. Ingest the scriptures that I gave you. Amen? And do your own study. I encourage you, please, do your own study. Let the Holy Ghost lead you on a journey through the Word. Amen? It's an adventure. Are you blessed? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's welcome the preacher man, Kyla. Minister Tyler. Hallelujah. Thank you, Mom, for that. Hallelujah. Did you receive that? Amen. Right when I get home, it's going right onto the TV, and I'm going to listen and listen and listen because that is a deep well of revelation. We're all leaders here, amen? Amen. We're all leaders. We're all focused. We're all diligent. It says the hand of the diligent will prosper, not the hand of the one that slacks off. We don't slack off in this family. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. What he's doing here is preparing us for something absolutely amazing. I say all the time when, when I hear people talk negative, I always tell them, I say, we're living in the best time. Why? Because we are alive in Him. I'm not worried about what the world's doing. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I'm focused on the King. The King's agenda reigns forever. Amen? The problem is people come to God and they have, have their own agendas, they have their own ideas, and then they stop up what God could have done. Hallelujah. We're not going to let that be our story. Amen? Hallelujah. I was thinking about this, um, this, this, uh, this morning. What are tithes and offerings? We talk about it. We give. But why are we giving? What, what's the reason for it? A tithe, as we say in this family, is kingdom tax. I think we all can agree to that. Jesus gave the... Um, gave the revelation to the, to, the, to the people as they were asking, should we pay taxes? In other words, they're trying to get out of being obedient as citizens. <laughs> we pay our taxes. Do we necessarily agree where they go? Well, not so much. That's why we get very rich and we choose where our money goes. That's the whole point of being rich. But see, kingdom tax is a tenth. It's a tithe. I give a 10% of everything I have to the king. Now that does one of two things. That secures you and then that promotes you. It secures you. Say it secures me. It keeps you in a solid ground. No matter what I'm going through, I'm solid in Him because I'm obedient to Him. And then number two, the offering is the value I place on the King through the gift that I bring. The offering is the value that I place on the King with the gift that I bring. Isn't that amazing? I want to, why, I want to know why that, I'll just say this real quick. The reason why the church is so stinking broke and always worried about the stupid devil is because they don't obey this principle. Principles work. Say that with me. Principles work. When I apply them, they work. They're designed to work for you. Why would you stop? Oh, Jesus. I love my mom and I love the word. Hallelujah. The king's message is so brilliant. You can read it a million times and never get enough. 
this is what the king says about us in uh, 3 John 1 2 it says beloved I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as thy soul prospers we know because of the teaching of this house that our soul is our body it's our flesh so your soul is naturally going to prosper he's saying I wish that your spirit would align with what your soul is doing you're chasing after the wind with every thing that's going on around you stop chasing money and it'll begin to look at you it'll begin to face you and say you have a mission dad always says we have a mission every time he gets money he releases it <laughs> it's the principles if you look at the rich they give they have massive givers Jeff Bezos gives all these people give I think they're closer to the 12, uh, to, uh, the 12 disciples in some of the church because they believe the message. They believe that if I do this, I get the result. I get more. I want to focus on this real quick with you. Isaiah uh, 1 verse 19. I'm reading it out of the uh, Living Bible Translation. It says this. It says, if you will only let me help you. If you will only let me help you. Throughout Isaiah, you can read, God is speaking and he's saying, let's reason together. It's all about, I want to commune with you. I want to talk. And he's saying this, he says, if you only let me help you, if you will only obey. If some people would just only obey, their life would be much easier. Then I will make you rich. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like what this says because it's reminding us obedience is better than sacrifice when I let go of the things that I think I need I take on his prerogative the king's agenda it's all wrapped up in a package hallelujah so all this to say if this is the place that we receive spiritual nourishment we receive from the king then it's our job to release to the king it's our job to give back to what he has supplied us with Hallelujah. It's a supply chain. It's just like uh, anything you see in the world. You see McDonald's, it's a great picture of supply chain. They just, they, they, it's, it's catch and release. They don't stop. They're making, they pop up everywhere. But that's the picture of the kingdom. We're supposed to do the same exact thing. They're just taking principle and applying it. Hallelujah. If I plant the seed, I get a harvest. Simple. Don't complicate it. Hallelujah. Those of, those of you that are online, this is a, a time for you to come. Amen. Like mom said, don't harden your hearts. Don't be quick to listen. Be slow to listen because sometimes the very thing you need is connected to a word somebody's going to release. But because of offense, it might uh, disconnect you from that. We don't believe that that is your portion here in this house. So we want to encourage you, those of you that are here uh, this morning, we encourage you, if you want to give by way of cash or check, we have the envelopes available for you to fill out with your details. And those of you that want to bring your gift by way of credit, our sister Christina is here in the front. Hallelujah. And those of you that are online, you can go to pay, uh, paypal.me uh, forward slash Charles and Defon. Hallelujah. Uh, we have the Christlove.org as well. You can click the donate button there. That is an option. Hallelujah. We have uh, Cash App. It's the cash symbol, Charles and Defon. They're going to pull that up on the screen for you there. Those of you that are watching online. Uh, Venmo is the at symbol. DR Charles hyphen and Defon. And for those of you that want to write a check out online, you can write that out to uh, Christ Love Media, P.O. Box 72800, Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. Hallelujah. Let's bring our gift. We're going to worship, enjoy the King. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If, <laughs> if you know God has been so good to you, you cannot just sit in and look up pretty and be like, hey, my God. Come on, let's stand up on our feet. If you're cold, now is the time to get a coat off. <laughs> hey, my God is good. Oh. God is good. 
up. Everything now double double. Hey. Your money double double. Everything now double double. Promotions double double. In the morning when I wake up, I will sing a praise unto you, my Lord. The love of God, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with me now and always will be. Amen.